So apparently Kamala got a Glock and she's ready to use it. Donald Trump is talking about migrants eating cats and Joe Biden has just put on this hat what is going on right Ooh, now? What's going on in the election cycle and the leader of the free world? I'm telling you, don't you know, this is even better than watching a movie like House of Cards or West Wing. Real silly and crazy. David, is this more of a thriller, a comedy, or a satire? I don't know what is going on right now. Listen, Andrew. In tied presidential race, Harris and Trump have contrasting strengths, weaknesses. Right now, Trump's biggest lead is on the economy. Harris leads on abortion, as well as several personality traits. All right, so in this video, we're here to kind of talk about our major takeaways from the debate. Okay, that just happened. And we're not gonna go into the details of the debate and break it down, but it's just kind of like, what are our major takeaways? And what are things that you need to remember? And what are some major trends in this election uh, as it gets closer to the voting day right so make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications listen guys we are very middle of the road i could see both sides i think uh on a personality level you see pros and cons but also on a party level there's pros and cons i will say this andrew i like some pokemons from the red pack i like some pokemons from the blue pack apparently the yellow pack andrew is not in play because in america there's a two-party system so here yellow are where is that on the political spectrum? Uh, you know, the yellow pack, the yellow people, we never matter. So let me just get into the very first point in, in terms of things that you may or may not have noticed that you need to have a discussion about when you're having this rather than just get emotional based off personalities, individual identities, tribalism. Well, well, let's be clear. And before we get into this, I mean, I think it's easy to be like, oh, Kamala won the debate. Okay, Kamala's on. Or like, oh, Trump is still, uh, I remember when the world was like, when Trump was in uh, president, uh, was president, blah, blah, blah. So I think like, there's still a lot of feelings and emotions going on, and it's easy to kind of jump and, and go rah-rah for your side, right? Right, right, right. But we got to look at both sides here. Point number one, Andrew, Kamala and the Democratic Party in general is trying to appear centrist in 2024. Is this real or not? Because you could argue that they spent the last four years being very left or quote-unquote, Andrew, woke. Woke is showing on all the polls right now to be very unpopular. It seems like the DNC and Kamala is reacting to that. Mm, so yeah, I mean, because in this election, most states are spoken for. Obviously, there's a handful of swing states, four to six maybe. We're talking about Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona. Primarily, right? That make a huge difference. So of course, now basically Kamala and Trump or Kamala, I think the DNC is to be honest, doing a better job at this is kind of catering towards those states. So by saying that, like by saying Kamala, hey, I'm a gun owner too, kind of like not the most democratic thing to say, but it makes you more appealing to these states or, uh, or also, I was a prosecutor. I fought the cartels. I fought against street, street criminals, which right. is interesting because, Andrew, I got to be fair here. At different points in her political career, she said either that I was a super progressive prosecutor and tried to do criminal reform, or now she's kind of saying I was hard on him. Right. So, I mean, whether you call it flip-flopping or changing your mind or just tweaking the language, I mean, I think there's a, di a number of different vocabs you could use to describe it but basically they're shifting the tone they're shifting the tone and they're catering more to towards the center not really in the center but more towards the center to seem less extreme left which is not as popular right now. And it seems to be a organized DNC thing because California Governor Gavin Newsom just vetoed a bill aimed at helping undocumented immigrants buy homes in the state. Maybe four years ago, this is actually a discussion. He just quietly was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to lose this state if I do this. So my question is this, if the Dems, DNC, if the left or whatever you want to call it, uh, is moving or framing it to be more in the center or thinking more as like a centrist would, does that mean they learn their lesson and is changing their mind and is like, oh, well, you know what? We just realized maybe some of that stuff doesn't work or are they just trying to win the election? Because I think it's very important for people to try to understand if they're actually gonna follow through on some of the more moderate things that they say they're going to do. Right, it seems like they're minimizing AOC and different more extreme left people within their own sure. party. Uh, they're not letting her like, have the stage for 10 minutes, so, right? So is I mean, the left I, actually moving towards the middle or is are they just saying they're moving towards the middle? 
All right, it's a good question, and I don't even know the answer, but right. I will say this. Off the last four years, if you're just judging off the last four years, it would seem like they're just trying to win. Okay. But it remains to be seen because if they don't govern from the middle, let's just say the Dems win this national election, right? And they don't govern toward the middle, it's almost a guaranteed loss for the next eight years toward the Republican side. Right. Like almost for sure, for sure, because those swing states will remember. But you know what else some of other people were saying, Andrew? They may let those swing states lean more right, but then they will keep the, the blue state policies very blue. Mm. So it almost like the experience in each state will start to become more disparate because they'll allow fracking in the states that they want to win the election in. Right, right, right. Anyway, guys, you guys let me know. It, I think anybody's guess is as good as anybody's, whether it's real like a real return to centrism or not from the left. Point number two, Andrew, Trump seems no longer fully engaged after Biden dropped out. Does he have a plan or a team in place or does he just want to win for himself? Mm, okay, this is so, even so, an internal discussion even within the right. Right, and you're saying obviously based off this last debate performance against Kamala, which by all accounts, Trump lost the debate. I'm not saying he lost the election, but he definitely lost this debate. He was not as prepared. He was falling for the bait. He was getting more emotional. He, uh, he kinda, wasn't hitting her on the major issues, yeah. which would probably be economy and uh, illegal immigration. He was repeating himself. I do think the moderators were slightly biased, but regardless, Trump didn't have a good performance. And Republicans are saying that too, by the way. And he does not talk with J.D. Vance very much, which is his vice president, which is a little bit weird. So anyways, I think that, it seemed like in the debates that Trump was not fully locked in and not fully prepared. Does this mean, is this as prepared and is this the best Trump is going to give? Or is he actually almost like maybe he doesn't have another gear to go or he's waiting to kick it into full gear because right now he just kind of seems like he's cruising. You know what it reminds me of, Andrew? Boxing or the NBA playoffs. This is a bad matchup for Trump. You know what I mean? Like, I think he really wanted, he's like, was built to go against Biden oh, or Hillary. Yes. But he is not built to go against somebody like 20 years younger, Kamala. She's obviously mixed race. And it's like, there's just a lot of things. I actually thought that this was his election to lose because to be honest, I thought the Dems did not do a good job nationally over the past four mm -hmm. years. I'm not saying they did a horrible job, but they definitely, in terms of, uh, the you know, the, the, the migrant situation and inflation, I thought that the Dems really handled those on a national macro policy level not very well. But it seems like he's more caught up in, in the personal battles and sort of just his own personal emotional investment. Yeah, I mean, listen, Trump, I watched the debates all the way through. And, you know, when asked about a plan, Trump kind of said, well, I'm not going to tell you the plan unless I become president. And I was like, it's kind of a weird response. Not really good for the debate points, at least. But anyways, but guys. very hyper unpresidential, unpolitician like response, Yeah, just right? not really helpful. And you know case. what I think Trump's biggest issue is, Andrew? He was the CEO of his company his whole life. So he wants to run America like a CEO. And I think that that's why he likes other leaders that run their country like a CEO. But being the president, Andrew, due to the system of checks and balances, is way more like being the chairman of the board of directors. It's not like being the CEO. Yeah, but do you think you have to work with everybody? Do you think it's like Trump's like, you know, you know, beating Hillary the first time, it was so fun. I had such a good time winning that election. But uh, this time, it's just not as fun. It's not as fun this time around. I'm not having fun. I'm not energized. Yeah, I do feel like that because he, he and it's and I actually think that some of his ideas are interesting and out of the box when he does become president, but it doesn't fully work with the mechanisms that are in mm. place either. And that's why he always beasts with his own team, even if they're all Republicans all the time. Yeah. He doesn't fully take the time to respect or understand, I guess, like just the, the way that position works. Right. And uh, I will say this, though, you know, some of the stuff that people were saying that he made up. It's there was a kernel of truth to it, but obviously he was exaggerating in it, eating it in a very typical Trumpian way because mm -hmm. he, he's just kind of like your crazy rich uncle who just pops off and says exaggerated things. Right. Point number three, Andrew Biden just wore a Trump hat. Is he taking this serious at all or is he frustrated with the DNC being taken off the ticket and showing it by his nonchalantness? Yeah, so. You can look at this from many different ways. So basically, David, what happened? What, what what's the just show the clip? I ain't going that far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even do a selfie. There you go. Yeah. 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 Hey. Well, I'm proud of you now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, huh? Just remember, 
going dog and cats. Uh, <laughs> hey, they're good. Thank you. They're good. Kentucky Fried Chicken. I hope you like the pizza. Uh, you guys picked the best again. I don't know where to go. I mean, here he is, I guess... It just feels like, did he just make a miscalculation? Because the guy, the Trump supporter basically dared him to wear the hat. He goes, oh, yeah, come on. I'm not that old to do that. And then like five seconds later, he becomes the kid in like the elementary school who puts like the chips and the cookie in his hamburger. And he's like, yeah, I won't do it. Uh, Yeah, I I mean, I (laughs) think, dude, first of all, you can take it as serious as you want it, but really, he probably shouldn't have done this. Obviously, as Joe Biden is Democratic president. It, People and, thought it was an AI photo. Yeah, I thought it was fake at first when you told me about it. And then I was like, really? Oh, he did that. Now, the context is I think Joe Biden was trying to be like, well, you know, I'm not that divisive. Sure, I'll throw in the hat. What does it mean? Ah, blah, blah. And he's probably thinking, well, I'm not going to be president anyways. It doesn't matter. They want me out of here. But so would he have just done that around. if it was him running? No way, right? No, no, you definitely, if he was actually running, no, you can't do that. I mean, you shouldn't do that, period. So is this, I mean, I actually No, no, think- no, but, but the reason why people are brought it up is because Trump during the debate did say, you know, secretly, Joe, he hates you. He actually hates you, Kamala. Uh, it kind of plays into it. Yeah, no, I mean, this is not a good look. I don't care how you slice it. It's not a good look. You should not be doing this if you are the Democratic <laughs> president. It feels like he just wanted to, like, I guess make it a joke, but I, I actually just think it was a combination of things. Yeah. I do think that this is him letting his, like, inner thoughts out being yeah. like, well, they cooked me off sure. this ticket anyway. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's trying to be lighthearted and be like, yeah, no, America's not that divisive. Yeah, I'll put on the hat, whatever. Weird. You guys let that me know. Optics. It's very hey, interesting. I'm going to say this. I don't know what the reason is, but it's bad for the optics. Point number four, Andrew, a lot of memes about we're screwed either way. So I saw a ton of these pop up after the debates, even though most people agreed that Kamala came across as very composed and stuff like that. People were just like saying that basically the American empire is going to decline, but it's just two different types of decline. Who's going to manage the decline in their own style? Mm. Um, A lot of people are saying that there's this meme that came out that said they both Candidates love large corporations and the military industrial complex. And I saw a lot of Canadians commenting saying, you know, nowadays Americans are just competing over social issues and social issues to me, they're second, third, fourth tier in importance. Your first tier issues, all the wars, they're all going to continue either president you pick. Mm, Yeah. Well, because America, you can say is a corporatocracy ran by corporations, military industrial complex, uh, not just the military industrial complex, multiple uh, industrial complex, big corn, for example, right? Yeah, big corn, big war, whatever you big administrative state, right? And I guess, yeah, I mean, it's really your. That's why I guess maybe I guess certain issues are seem like they're dividing the nation or always defining the nation or defining who people vote. You're for. You're talking about like social issues or identity based issues. Right identity, now. I would say abortion, but social issues, yes, gender issues, all those social issues, and and it's like. Those are uh, those are always like divided because like healthcare industrial complex is that really changing? Even if you have another, even if you bring back Obamacare and it's like a little bit better, you know Obamacare. It was well, like there is they Obama, got it, but there it, is it, Obamacare it, right it now. It was one, yeah. No, I mean like yeah. Was, I guess even if it was better, like is it really? Is is everybody really going to get healthcare? You know what I mean, like that. Right, right, right. You're saying that basically a lot of things that, and, and this is what um, Second Thought that one channel's like. It's not that different. He always says that these people are just figureheads for larger, larger apparatuses that are more similar than you think. Yeah, and, and but I, but but with that said, I kind of believe that too. Where it's like you're kind of voting for who you want to represent. It's not necessarily this person's making all the decisions. This person can't overhaul the systems. This person can't change all the head of this and the CIA. Yeah, you can argue and the FBI. president is less powerful than people think, other than the yeah, war. Yeah, yeah. It's really about like representation and vibes. I don't know. Let's just think about it that way. Who you vote for for the vibes? What vibes do you want in the country? You know? Yeah, I do think that Trump when he's in president mode, does try to do more rogue things. I don't know if he's ever, like, necessarily able to get him done because I just think that he doesn't fully understand how the mechanisms work. I think that Kamala will be more of a president by committee. Right. Like, people will be voting on things internally within the DNC, the leadership, and things like that. I'll say this. It's pretty clear that there's multiple levels to this, Andrew. There's an individual identity 
party identity. And then there's the policies and execution ability. Mm. Okay. And, and these are all very separate things that a lot of people cannot separate in their mind. Right. Well, what do you, what do you think about the, uh, do you have an opinion on the, uh, criticism of Kamala being like, Oh, well she has had three years as vice president to do all this stuff. How come she hasn't done anything? And then other people are like, well, she's not president. But then people are like, well, she was acting president because Biden's pretty much been out. So it's like, is there any credit to that? Is there any credence? I honestly think that Kamala, to be honest, is more of a figurehead for the DNC. Mm. I don't really see her as somebody who has a Hard. lot of strong, like, like if the winds go left, left, she, she's going left, left. If the winds go center, left, she's going to go center, left. Mm. That's what I believe. So it's really about the winds. Which way do you yeah. blow? But, but, but a lot of people don't want to think, you know what I mean? It's more complicated to think about like these uh, gigantic apparatuses full of like 20 top level leaders that well, you now have to analyze. Well, let's just say in November, you'd rather vote for somebody, fill in a bubble, and then have- and try to wrap up everything in a no, person, right? and have, a, have to have your problems be solved by just voting for one person. You're just like, this person's going to get it done, right? <laughs> but that's actually not true. You're probably going to have to get it done on a local level, you and your community. And you got to live your life differently as a citizen, to be honest. Like, yep. no president is going to come save you. And obviously, a lot of things get more executed at a local level. And you could say there's some linkage between the local uh, horizon and the federal horizon. But anyway, point number two, voting simply as an Asian, I will say this. I do think Trump is going to say more racist-esque sounding things. But I also think that generally, Democrats are softer on crime. Mm -hmm. Like specifically street crime. So I guess you could argue that Trump is going to embolden white supremacists or extremists, but I guarantee you that the left will embolden street criminals. Mm. And that's just the trade-off that we have here. And anybody who tries to tell you that, oh no, one side's going to have all pros and no cons, they both got heavy pros and cons. And it depends on your own individual exposure to those things. Point number three, Andrew, if I had my way in a dream world, I'd say maybe on a federal macro, big, big, big picture scale, you'd want a, a, a Democrat president. But I'd say you, lo, more locally, you'd probably want to go more conservative, mm -hmm. especially your DA and police chief. Mm -hmm. But that's not actually how life works. All right. Like you, it doesn't, it, you don't just get to counterbalance different systems at different horizons and different plateaus and levels and geometric planes. And then, uh, yeah, you're stuck with the choices that you have. So I guess, Andrew, is everybody out there just trying to balance it out with their own priorities or are people getting emotional and demonizing the other tribe? I guess nowadays with given all the information, all the conspiracy theories, all the misinformation, all the confusing memes, all the conflicting information, of like, oh, this was a lie, this wasn't, they really did that, or they're really eating cats, or they're really not, or Kamala was, did this. I guess what it boils down to is people are going to vote for the party and what they just feel. Because I think there's just an overload of information nowadays where it's like, what information is even truly correct? Right. Was they, were, Haitian, were migrants eating ducks yeah. in Springfield? Like, or was it one lady on meth in Canton, Ohio? Like, 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 like Kamala was the border czar, true. But it's also true that Trump shot down the bill that was going to put more security at the border. Right, as a, as a campaign power move. Right, because he wanted to run on problems rather than solve the problems. Uh, but then the Dems did create that problem. I, I would say so too. So well, see, that's hey, why I'm saying it's hey both. Guys, it's hey both guys. sides. It's both hey sides. Guys, both sides not doing what they're supposed to do. So anyways, I guess, yeah, I guess people are going to vote on a motion and that's not even wrong at this point because there's just so much information out there. And probably ne nobody's going to challenge corporatocracy, yeah. to be honest, at a very, very, if you want to scale out the zoom lens to the eight millimeter super wide. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let us know how you're voting. Keep it civil, guys. Until next time, we the Hop Out Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.